Oh, you listen to 107.9 FM. You listen to Mr. Flex, DJ Kobe in the studio, and we have a guest, DJ. Yes, DJ, DJ Chip. Chip is DJ in the house. DJ Chip, how you doing? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I finally got the right mic. Um, <coughs> great interview with Tim from Soul Purpose. We were listening on the way in, giving everyone a little bit of information about hip hop early days. Yes, yeah, cool. It was good. You know, you caught me on the spot, but it kind of gave me a chance to warm up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Excellent. And you were from the Fantasia Sound, which was like an original sound out of the 70s. Yes. And you also talked about, um, like, your sound system as you built, like, your speakers, the whole bit. Like like a Jamaican, basically, yes, sound system. Yes, de- definitely. So if you can give us a little bit of information for our listeners about how you went about building your sound system back okay. in the day. <laughs> well, first of all, it, it took a while to get to that, <clears throat> that level. Um... Most of the stuff that we started out buying, Mm -hmm. uh, we bought from the store. And then just so happens we ran across this fantastic man named uh, Action Jackson. Now, Action Jackson uh, did sound systems for some previous uh, DJs like uh, Flowers and and, and Plumber Mm -hmm. uh, from Brooklyn. And when I used to go out partying and listen to these great systems, uh, it was naturally to to talk to him to see about building some equipment for us. Uh, which he did. Beautiful. And it's just like a Jamaican Jamaican sound system from Yard, that sort of... Uh, well, a lot of people don't know that uh, Brooklyn, uh, we had a lot, a large Caribbean uh, influx of people yep. from, from the islands. And I'm quite sure you're familiar with Labor Day mm-hmm. in Brooklyn. Well, ha, um, great sales Labor day. day. I- <laughs> <laughs> uh, the DJs would bring out their... Matter of fact, I think that was the first time I saw these uh, huge uh, sound systems because you know reggae was a you know a driving force in that community. You know you had to get good sound system to produce some good reggae music, and bass yep. is the key to reggae music. So these guys uh, had those kind of systems. And was uh, the reggae a big influence back then as well in the music and everything as well? Oh, um, oh, of course, because um, you know the music that we heard uh, coming out of those those sound systems. Right. Uh, so that was one one of the things that mm. got us up and going. Just seeing those guys, you know, along with the uh, the, the American DJs there too, but uh, primarily uh, the Caribbean DJs who had the the bass. Yeah, <laughs> and you guys were playing a little bit of reggae back in the day. Uh, it, it took a while for Americans to uh, uh, catch on catch, catch on, on to <laughs> reggae. Uh, I, I would say that Bob Marley was the one mm-hmm. who who, the guy who who brought it mainstream. Yeah, because I started incorporating some uh, Bob Marley into my playlist, mm-hmm. and then uh, later on I started uh, playing some uh, of the other artists. Because I remember where I where I used to live, uh, there was a Yellow Man poster. Yeah, uh, in one of the one of the stores where I lived. Right. I said, "My God, look at that guy! He's cool with the, the hat and, and, right. and the hair and everything." You know, until later on, I got to hear some of his music, which is great. Mm-hmm. You no know, zunga zunga is like <laughs> gazang is like big, big tune, big tune, my favorite, big tune. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And, you know, it's like everywhere, I think, all countries. Once Bob Marley's music sort of got there, everywhere took on to reggae. You know? Like. Yeah. I think uh, another thing that helped push reggae in the United States was uh, the Harder They Come movie. Yep. With, right. with Jimmy Cliff. Yeah. Well, I love that soundtrack. Yeah. We could drink. You know, I love that soundtrack. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize the movie and the music is one thing, you know? I know, because so. they're using uh, one of the songs for a car commercial back in the United States. Oh really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I today? Like, Wait a minute, you know that that's, that song comes from uh, right. you know, the harder they come. Uh, it's a big tune, and I, and I say it's a universal tune, and and a lot of people don't realize. Oh, the, the tune is you can get it if, if you, you really want. want. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. Go, that's a good car commercial yeah. tune yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, like yeah, even people who don't know about reggae know about Jimmy Cliff and those sort of songs because they were actually played on commercial radio yes. all around the world, not just on. Certain but they genres go back to the, the, to the foundation of reggae, really. When you go back to Bob Marley and all yep. that, right. and back in the early days, you'll hear those names, those voices all the time you know, through all the, mm. the library of all the music that, yeah, right. that is produced from back then, from when you're even talking about it, you know. Sure, because um, the, the thing that I liked was the fact that uh, hearing the variety of, of different uh, reggae artists that were on that soundtrack, that you know, um, whose music didn't really didn't come to the to the states until right. way later on mm-hmm. right. you know yeah that's it 
And you did a show last night up oh. at the Carlton. That was a nice little vibe in there. Thank you. Thank you. I had to practice for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, they using the Serato, which mm. is the new uh, way DJs play. Right. Not all DJs, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I still like vinyl, right. but it, it helps to know what's going on. So that's like something you're used to using the... When we saw yesterday. No, no, no. I, I have a tremendous vinyl collection at home. Right. So uh, economically, it didn't make a lot of sense for me to carry all that. That's yeah. right away. I still have all this vinyl to mm. play, which I just love. Mm. Right. Now. Definitely. It's practical, obviously, when you're traveling and you're on the road. And oh, it's, yeah, it's, when you're doing it like that, I can see the need enough. for it. Well, you know, respect. It was a wicked set. And oh, it sounded thank you so sweet much. last night. It really yeah, did, you know. Which, my funky toes. You know? Yeah, which, you know, we were both making the comment, you know, sometimes you go out and DJs are playing with a laptop and it's just missing something in the sound. It just doesn't quite sound right. Where last night... It sounded sweet. One of, your, one of your comments was it sounded very full. Yes. Um, and it, yes. it didn't sound like you were using a laptop or Serato. Exactly. Oh, wow. So yeah. Thank it, you. It, it, you know, um, obviously it contributes to the sound system as well, but mm -hmm. it, it sounded very full. I mean, even I have to agree with that. It sounded very nice. Yes. Thank you. As a full sound, when you, you know, as brothers, you like, when you hear the bass, oh, yeah. you want to hear, you wanna oh, hear the full yeah. tune, so... You, know. you played some funky tunes last night. <laughs> and then you got up and started well, the whole the idea, tune, um... As far as getting uh, picking the selection of records that I wanted to play, uh, basically they wanted to hear uh, what I was playing uh, back, back then. Back then, right? You know, so I made sure that you know I, I adhered to that playlist and didn't meander yep. well, off on, on a, on a tangent somewhere. And it seemed to go over very well because they, they were dancing, so that, yeah, that was good. I read, I recognized a couple of the rhythms that you played, and uh, oh. I mean I'm old school, so you know. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Has a mono the the bango up in there, new bell. Right. You know, so, so good vibes, cool. good vibes. No, it was lovely, great night. And you coming up on Tuesday night? If you want to let our listeners know where you're going to be and what's it all about happening on Tuesday night. Uh, hi. Well, basically, I'm going to be at the Bird on William Street, and I'm doing a historical perspective on you know Brooklyn's contribution uh, to hip hop, which has been vastly overlooked. Uh, the American journalists didn't really do a good job of researching and, mm -hmm. and, and checking facts. And they, they heard about this new thing called hip hop. Uh, they started asking the, the people who lived up there about it, and they just took their word for it. They, they, didn't, they didn't really verify anything, or they didn't even check with the other boroughs uh, where the other GJs uh, were, were doing their thing too. Mm -hmm. And they just sort of just ran with it. But now, uh, over the years, there's this big debate about you know where. It, all started yeah you know i mean every every genre of music you need to know your history in the music when you're playing music you know it's right. good to know what happened 30 40 50 years ago true to draw you towards something you know yeah. like well, i you, think you've it's got important a, you've got a lot of hip-hop fans and, and yeah. in the youth as well and if they want to understand and learn exactly. the foundation of where the music really came from then come and listen to dj Chips. Chips. Sorry. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah, come and listen to DJ Chips, who's going to show you and you listen to his words, and you'll learn a few things about where the music that you listen to every day, where it comes from. And Definitely. Yeah, because a lot of the music uh, that the hip hop guys sampled comes from the disco era. <laughs> That's right. You know, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So they're basically, to me, they just, just flip the name, you know, and, and use the music. Right. You know. I mean, you were saying when we were talking last last night about uh, in your day with the, the dancers and, and uh, the stuff that you were using back then way before a lot of the hip-hop guys were doing that before. Sure, because um, they didn't really get into the DJ game until the, the late 70s because right. they had a lot of gang violence going on right. in the South Bronx and <laughs> a DJ wouldn't dare bring out any uh, equipment about any mm. some yeah. damage being done. Uh, just that one, one time uh, we did a block party up there in uh, 76 I think it was 76, 75 right. and we were playing and they kept pulling out the plug on, on us. Well, somebody behind us kept pulling out the plug and so I told my boy Larry B I said you know let's pack up our stuff yeah. <laughs> let's get out of here let your cousin Cool D uh, let him do take over do, do the rest of the set we're, we're out of here yeah. Yeah. you don't need the trouble <laughs> no, no 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 
So that was somebody obviously stirring the pot, right? <laughs> like obviously expecting a reaction or whatever. You know? I but mean, the, the people yeah. on the block love what I was doing, but you know, safety is first. Of course, Def of course. definitely. Yeah. So that's on Tuesday night at the Bird. What time? Uh, I think it starts at seven thirty. Yep. So get out early. Yep. And you're going to give everyone a little bit of a chat about history of hip hop. Sure, and how I got started yeah. and everything. Nice. So, yeah. And then I'm going to play some nice tunes for oh, everyone. Oh, oh, no, yes, tunes, definitely. Yeah. I'm bring. I'm playing 45 records. Wow. Right. Well, you know. that in that in itself is worth going down to see people. The original Dunga yeah. on Pondo vinyl, right? So come check it out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> check it out. Definitely. All right. So this anyway, it's been a cool experience for me. I just want to uh, thank you for having me. Oh. You know, come on board and. Uh, yeah, Absolutely, and it's a, a pleasure to meet yeah. you. And, I love and the vibe here in Perth. It's been uh, overwhelming at some times. Right. Lovely. No, I'm, I'm digging it all. So, so uh, how long are you here for? Uh, uh, I'll be leaving on this coming Thursday. So it's almost been like uh, two weeks. Well, nice. I'm, I'm bar for the high night crew and the, and the Soul Purpose <laughs> Posse. Welcome, and I hope you've enjoyed your stay. Here oh, show, most you know? definitely I did. Uh, of course, they're going to have me back. They want me to come back. Absolutely, so, absolutely. You know. Well, you know, you're always welcome to come in the show. Next time, we'll get you to bring some 45s in and you can just start dropping them for us. <laughs> oh, that would be, that would be great. You know, we can do a funky reggae great. show. We can yeah, do that with all disco, disco vibes as well. So we have that in the reggae crossover too. Why know, not? So. Play some fellow rants. We can do that. So everybody get down to the bird and listen to the vibes of DJ Chips and experience something new. Uh, old school, but new. That's to you right. And so give thanks for coming in and sharing a bit of your time with us tonight and for, with Tim also. It was Absolutely. Great. Thank great. you so much. Big I really appreciate it. Respect. And All we'll right. see you next time you're back in Perth. Yeah, love Perth. Oh, okay. Thank you. Don't forget, Tuesday night, Bird, 7.30. Get yourself down there early. Don't miss out. Absolutely. Okay, folks, that was uh, DJ Chips you're listening to right there. And at the top of that selection, you heard the sounds of Royal Diamond by Tony D. Clutch. Clear? Tony D. Clutch Eye. Clutch Eye. Big respect. Enough respect. He's all the way in Miami. Big yourself up, Fresh tunes right here, right now on 107.9. Then you heard the sounds of Alleluia by Diamond Platinum featuring Morgan Heritage as well. Right now, I'm going to give you uh, vibes from a guy named. Chronics 